And so now I want to I want to uh, invite Julien Lemoyne, who is CTO and co-founder of Algolia, uh, the the uh, really a, a famous company in the API space, which is uh, which is a little bit more recent than Twilio, but who tackle an important uh, um, uh, uh, subject, which is search. And uh, yes, yeah, so we really got to have you, Julien. How are you today? I'm going well, thank you. Very happy to be here with you. Yeah, we are really glad to have you. Uh, so uh, yeah, for the people who don't know yet uh, Algolia, the few one who slept the last five years uh, and didn't wake up, can you tell us a little bit in numbers? What is Algolia? Where are you based? What do you do and at what scale? Yes, yeah, sure. So Algolia was started in 2012 um, and we, we developed an API for developers to have a great search in their application websites. To give you an idea of the scale today, um, we have like 30 billion of searches per week, 1.5 trillion per year, uh, which is quite big in terms of scale. And we have even more API calls if we count all the indexing operation, all the different type of API calls you can do. We are about like 470 uh, people overall in seven different offices worldwide. We started in France, but then we moved the company to the US. So we have three different offices in the US, uh, three in Yemen and uh, one in Asia. So 500, um, approximately 500 people, um, yeah. probably this, this number in a few weeks, <laughs> for <laughs> 1.3 trillion search. It's not even billion, it's trillion search. Uh, it, it's quite it's quite amazing numbers, and and today just to you know we, we talk about this ask your developer mindset that you know APIs are the digital software supply chain. Today, can you tell us a little bit what the, what are the APIs in those Algolia portfolio? What you can do with Algolia APIs? So we have the first API we developed, which is the search API, which is used of course for the search box, but it's way more than the search box. It's actually all the navigation, browsing. Um, exploring your content. So we have e-commerce website, media website, SaaS application that power pretty much all their front end based on, a, uh, on our API. So it's the access to the content via navigation, via full text query, via other type of, um, of interaction, even voice search. So that's our first API that we developed. And, and we have just released today our second big product, which is recommendation, which is on the same idea of powering the whole uh, UI of a website or application. So going a bit above search, which is still a, a connect area, which is to like um, provide related content, related products, a product that are both together, or all, all this type of experience. And all of that with an API, of course. So for uh, we will have a, an interview for uh, again twenty minutes. But for people who wants to ask direct questions directly to Julien about Algolia or APIs, the API vision of Julien, you can ask them directly in the chat. So Julien, the, the story tell that Algolia started with a mobile search engine, a search engine for mobile application. Uh, but when did you decide to pivot really to an API for search? And, and yes, was it really obvious at the time? It's a good question. So indeed, in 2012, um, for the context, it was a big boom of mobile applications. So we, we uh, me and Nicolas, my co-founder, we were working on search for a long time, more than 10 years. And we were seeing all those mobile developers trying to have a good search in their app, and they were all struggling. So indeed, we started with an offline search engine for mobile phone, which forced us to completely redesign it from scratch because the state of the art was pretty much not working on those small devices and the CPU, the, all the hardware constraints were crazy in 2012. We launched it, we had a lot of good feedback, but the constant feedback was, that's great, but I want it on my server and <laughs> on my back end, not, not only on the offline uh, mobile phone. So very quickly, it was obvious that we have to pivot and we launched like the, the company and the product in September. In October, we were already deciding to, to pivot. So it was very, very quickly in terms of 
getting this feedback from the customer. I think there is nothing better than putting the product in the hands of customer and, and getting the feedback, discussing with each of them at the beginning. So it was very easy, but it was not obvious for sure to launch a search API at this time as a SaaS service. Index Tank was the first um, SaaS um, API for uh, search and they have kind of failed. They have been acquired, acquired by uh, LinkedIn to work on their internal search. So they were a bit this idea that search is too complex to be packaged as an API. You need to have like the software on-prem on your machines and you need to be able to completely tune it. So it was not at all obvious uh, that it was doable to package it as an API. Yeah, and, and for the quick story, uh, we received some speakers, I, I cannot name the company, but who say that uh, some companies, Algolia search engine is so great that some companies whose business model is based on ads don't want to integrate Algolia because it will make the search engine too fast and that will kill their business model. Just to tell you, you know, about you know the, the story I've heard uh, from Silicon Valley, uh, but I, I cannot tell the company it is. But uh, yeah, I, because actually you've been backed by great investors uh, and you've been to Y Combinator, uh, the, uh, the the Silicon Valley acceler um, famous accelerator, but did really in 2012, 2014, did they really understood the power of API distribution as a uh, for digital product? Like how hard it was to convince them? I would say no. Back in 2012, um, we need to put everything into context. Like even Twilio was not at all the company it is today. So. API as a business model um, were very early. Like even the usage-based business model was uh, kind of very early. So it was not obvious for investors. But what was obvious is more like the total addressable market, um, the traction you can get with a good product in the hands of developers. And there were already some companies that were executing with product for developers, like Atlassian. So even if it was not a pure API, we had enough example in the industry to get the trust of investors. Of course, today the situation is different. Like API ecosystem is covered by analysts, it's covered by investors, and they all have some good references of companies that managed to scale very well on this um, domain. Uh, it was more difficult in 2012, but it was far from being impossible. And, and we proved it like you, you can convince investors when you have good metrics and, and you can show that you know exactly which customer you are targeting and, and you you have happy customer about the product. At the end, it's, it's all about the same, like it's developing a product getting some customer feedback, having some early fans. And I can tell you, like, one of the customers we got in the US become one of our first business angels because it became fan of the product in, in an hour. And when you show those stories to investors, even if, like, the ecosystem you are in is not mature enough, it's early signals that they understand and, and they see that there is some big potential. So uh, yeah, we, we, we had the, uh, Jeff Lawson talking about the ask your developer mindset. The theme of the event is APIs all the way down. Uh, so it seems that with APIs, you've started to build for builders, to build for developers. So my question is like, as CTO uh, and co-founder, what were the per particular things you cared about to be sure developer will love Algolia? What was the, what, what did you, what were your focus? So there are a few. Um, I think like developers are users like everyone. They don't like to read like 200 pages of documentation before starting to use something. So ease of use is key. But then it, it cannot be an opaque solution which is completely packaged and it's easy, it's one click or one line of code. It need to be flexible. You need to have the whole control on the solution and you should never be blocked by someone that impose a system for you. So having this flexibility in mind and this, like we are building product for developers. So flexibility, keeping the control, keeping the transparency was always a driver of everything we built over time. And it was one of the biggest difference 
between us and the competition because we had a lot of competition and it's a very competitive market. But most of them are packaging solutions for marketers, which is very different because they don't think about, oh, someday, one day someone will want something different and a developer will need to customize it. So it's way more static and developers are, are forced to work with a way which is imposed by the provider. So it's really the big difference I see. And today, everyone is using the word API. Like you can take any product of the market, they claim they have the best API. But I really doing a big difference between API first company, people that know developer and building a product for developers and all the company claiming to have a, a good API. And I'm convinced developers already do well the difference. Yeah, sometimes some people try to refer it as API as a product versus product APIs. You know, the fact that your API is really your product, your piece of digital infrastructure that you integrate as a service. And some are product with some APIs to be able to whatever, customize and everything, but the mindset is not the same. And actually this is also uh, uh, the question I wanted to ask about this, uh, uh, this mindset. Uh, how difficult it was to hire people who understand this mindset, this API mindset, developers, architects, whatever, product managers. Uh, did you have to make your own internal culture or no? Like there was already some API fans kind of and wanted to build it with you. So indeed, we, we had some at the beginning, like we had some uh, uh, network and we hired people that were really into this API culture, I would say. So it was not difficult. But of course, you cannot scale this way for, for a long time. Like you have to hire people. And indeed, like it, it has uh, led to some uh, challenges over time because this is not a skill set which is uh, and which was well defined. And we, especially like on, on pricing, for example, we did a few mistakes. We had some challenges, which was just the consequence of having people that were thinking in a different uh, way. They were thinking about like their SaaS software with their plans and their feature differentiation between the plans, which is very different than the way you think as a developer. Like you want to have access to a feature. You don't want to upgrade to a specific plan to get it. So we had some big challenges, um, especially outside of engineering and, and product, I would say, uh, to get access to the skill set that really understand well uh, this ecosystem and this way to price. And, and today, like usage-based pricing is known as the third evolution of pricing model for SaaS, but it was not the case like when we started. Yeah, and, and now the business model of Algolia, it really shows it's an infrastructure. I think you pay per units of search or something like that. Yeah, it shows that Algolia is a piece of infrastructure of the digital, uh, the digital uh, supply chain. Uh, so yeah, we totally get it. And if you are a part of infrastructure, uh, let's talk about uh, performance, reliability, uh, because yes. I'm, as I was asking earlier, it's a really important aspect to be sure that if what people consume you as a as a as a service you know, never fails. And, I, and, I, and I've, I've received some Algolia speakers for your VP engineering and others who say that sometimes you reach 99.999% on, on your top level. Like why it was so important to achieve such a, such a, a reliability for, uh, for Algolia. Yes, we, we are crazy about high availability and performance. Um, it's critical for me. Like we are part of the stack of our customer. Like we own a big responsibility to be up all the time. Like if we fail, like we can generate um, a big consequence, big business consequence for our customer. So I feel like it's our responsibility to always be better than what they can build internally. So that's why since the beginning, we are multi uh, provider in terms of deployment, like we duplicate the data in different locations, different provider. Uh, we discuss with the customer about which location they want. But our goal is that when a provider fail, we have no consequence. And I can tell you like um, the incident that OVH got like a few, um, a few months ago, we had hundreds of servers in this data center that burned. Um, we had zero consequence for our customers. So that's our ID. 
does not mean it was zero consequence for our team. Like, of course, we had to, like all the automatic procedure were not completely able to handle such a thing and we had to spawn machines. But the ability to distribute the data in different providers, for us, our goal is to, we should never try to get an excuse. We need to have the trust of our customer and there is no valid excuse when you fail. It cannot be the fault of AWS, GCP, Azure, or whatever. You need to have a solution which is which is just running even if there is a big failure in, in one of the big providers. So that's why since the beginning, we, we put that more as a design principle. We need to package high availability in the product. We need to make sure like everything is highly reliable and we build that even in our API client. So there is always a retry strategy we build and we put all the good HTTP timeouts to be sure like even if there is a massive failure of the DNS of a cloud provider, the product is still up and running. Yeah, and I did, a, I'm a consumer of Algoli APIs and I did a demo for a search engine we do for personal data. And so the, the guy was thinking it was a, a staged, it was not real. It was so fast that he said, oh no, you're not live. You know, you just take the data from local and say, no, 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 it's actually, <laughs> it actually works. So yeah, I, I this availability sometimes is, is misleading. And, and, and just to say, uh, uh, recently I was talking with a, a, a big corporate like uh, executive who said like, but if this, if this company fail, you know, how will we, you know, uh, uh, have an issue with it? say, these companies are five nines. <laughs> they, by integrating, integrating, integrating them, actually you will fail less that because if you do it yourself, you will fail a lot more than these companies and these guys. So yeah, it's it's a mindset, right? The, as a service, uh, and as as you say, it's uh, there are many many procedures that really few companies get uh, today. Uh, so uh, yeah, um, my my question is like, you started the business, uh, an international business, starting from Europe and especially from France. Yeah, what was the main challenge to scale this API company? We had a lot of uh, challenges. I think like back in 2012, starting in France, it was not the best setup to start an international company. And especially like the first customer we, we, we were pitching in France, to be honest, they were reluctant to use a small startup in France. And actually when we started to have some good references in the US, it helped us to close uh, more customer in France, for example. So I feel like for those type of services and for software in general, I feel like the world is used to buy American software, American service. And being a French company um, is a negative signal. So I feel like understanding that early and we had no idea how to build a US company or to do like the, the flip uh, which is a transformation of France to a US company. So we, we decided to apply to one of the programs that was for us the best, um, Y Combinator. And we we decided we need to put all the chance in on our side to be successful worldwide because there is no way we can be successful in one country like France. The market is way too small. It's worldwide or nothing in, in such a market. So. I feel like it's a lot of question of perception. Even investors were not at all, um, the, like the markets of um, investment, the size of the funds in Europe were very different than in the US, um, which is very different today. Like it's, it, it has made, like we, we have seen a lot of progress in France um, in terms of investment capability, uh, but definitely the challenge of being perceived as an international company, I think was the biggest one. Um, and it, so it seems you build APIs to represent with one unique interface, a lot of technical, uh, a big technical yes. stack. It seems for you, be a US company was the interface for business representing a lot of uh, administrative stuff, right? It was your business interface as a US, yes. to be a US company. Yes, I agree. I yes, agree. So interface I today. Sorry? I still believe it's the case today. Like you have more chance to be successful if you are a US company than any other country. So, uh, so yeah, so uh, for that actually a, an, an advice I would have asked you for people who wants to build API companies today, like not the Algolia for search, but the Algolia for, 
whatever uh, for other piece of software, let's say it like that. So what would be your advice for such a scale to achieve such a scale? I would say my biggest advice would be consider the pricing as your product. I feel as engineer, as API um, centric product, we tend to think like the documentation is the product. Fine. And documentation is critical. Like it needs to be your product. But we tend to put a limit on like the pricing is something else. It, it is your product. Like the pricing is your product and it's a critical part of your product. Like if your pricing is too complex, if your documentation is too complex, they won't even try your product. So I would really tend to put everything in the mindsets of the products and make sure like, yes, you are perceived as international. You are an international compatible company, which does not mean you need to have all your headcount in the US. France today is still our biggest office by far. So I don't think this is incompatible, but being a US company is, uh, is helping too. Yeah, uh, we have one question. We have still two minutes. One question about uh, the developer experience. So it seems Algolia has been leading the developer experience front. What advice you would give to someone who, would, who wants to build APIs and be loved by developers about developer experience? So forget about the terminal analogy. Like developers are not uh, people that are in front of their terminal and want to write super complex um, line of codes. I think like before everything, like think about the global experience of coming to the website, looking at the documentation, like testing the product, identify all the friction that exists in this in this journey, like, is there an, uh, a concept which is difficult to understand? What's the time between the moment they come to the website and they have their first a a moment where the product is up and running on their website? If you solve all of that, meaning it's not that different than the mindset of solving um, the friction in another product, it's just more technical because you are you have API client, you have some interface with their stack and all of that, but it's all about identifying the friction, solving the friction, and having a great support, great interaction with, with them. And when you can do all of that, then, um, then you can see the result with customer satisfaction. Yeah, thank you, uh, uh, Julien. Uh, so we, are, we just arrived at the 25 minute uh, uh, limit. Uh, thank you for this. If we want to find some news and some stuff about Algolia, where do we go? On our website, Twitter, um, and uh, LinkedIn. Um, definitely happy also to, to answer all questions you can have. Yeah, and if you have any questions, you can reach uh, uh, Julien on wh wherever it is, Twitter, LinkedIn, or uh, or um, uh, yeah, to, to, to chat directly with him. Thank you very much, Julien. You know, Algolia has you been... Know has been a company that has been quoted many, many times as you know, a pure API company and showing the model of programmable business models you know, in API infrastructure uh, in Europe. So uh, thank you very much for being there to tell us the story. With pleasure. And we still have a lot of things to do. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there's definitely a lot of things. It's just a start. Exactly. Thank you, Julien. Have a good one.